Okay, now let's do some live coding. And we're going to demonstrate the if statement by writing an application that simulates flipping a coin. So I'm going to go to File, New Project, Visual C Sharp Console Application, and I'm going to call this Coin Flip. Now a computer doesn't really understand what a coin is, so we're going to have to create some kind of representation of a coin. And to do that, all I'm going to do is create an integer variable. And I'm just going to say that if the integer is 0, then the coin is tails. And if the integer is 1, then the coin is heads. So I'm going to grab that to store it in. I'm also going to need a variable to store what the user guessed. And we're going to use a string variable for that because it's going to come in from the console. If the user enters an H, I'm going to set it to heads. If the user enters a T, I'm going to assume that's tails. Then we're going to use an if statement to determine whether they got it right. We're going to need a third variable for this, which is going to represent the random number generator class in C Sharp. There is a class built into system that will get random numbers for us. So I'm going to show you how all this works. At the top, I'm going to declare my variables. I'm going to have an integer for the coin. I'm going to have a string for the user guess. And then I'm going to create the random number generator variable. The class name is random. That's the type. And I'm going to say RNG, which in my mind stands for random number generator. And I'm going to set this equal to a new random. And this is because the random class is a non-static class. If I want to use it, I have to instantiate it, which means load it into memory. This is something we're going to get into later, but for now I just want you to take it on faith that if I want to use the random class, this is the syntax that I must use. So the next thing we're going to do is we'll leave a comment and we'll say query the user. Console, right line. Actually, I don't want it to be right line. I want it to be right because I'd like them to type in their answer on the same line as the question. So I'm going to say, enter your guess, heads or tails, H or T. And then I'm going to store their guess using console read line and assign it to the user guess variable. The next thing I want to do is get a random number for the coin flip. And in this case, I'm going to say that the coin variable should be assigned to the random number generator's next random number. So when I say dot next, you're going to see the documentation come up, and I've got a couple choices here. It's going to tell me that it returns a non-negative random number less than the specified maximum. I want to make sure that we either get a 0 or a 1. So I'm going to put my parentheses here, and you notice here I've got an up and down arrow, one of three. These are the different ways that you can use random.next. If I don't specify anything, it's going to return a non-negative random number. So it could be anywhere between 0 and 2 billion. That's not what I want. I want it to be between 0 and 1. If I hit the down arrow key, it will show me another way of using next. And it says, well, you can pass in the maximum value. Yeah, that could be helpful. But I think the one I want is the third one. I can pass in two numbers, the minimum value and the maximum value. And it says that the min value is the inclusive lower bound. Inclusive. That means it's included. Well, I want that to be zero. And then I hit a comma, and it highlights max value. And it says max value is the exclusive upper bound of the number returned. So now I know that whatever number I put in is not going to be included. It's going to generate a random number between zero and one less than whatever I put for the max value. 
since I want 0 or 1, I'm going to put 2, since 2 will not be included. So when this line runs, the value stored in coin will be either a 0 or a 1, which will be random. Now we have to determine our winner, and this is where we're going to use our if statements. So if the coin's value is equal to 0, which is what we said would be tails, and the user guess is equal to t, then we're going to give them a victory message. The coin flip was tails. You win. Else, if the coin was 1 and the user guess was heads, h, we're still going to give them a victory message. The coin flip was heads. You win. If neither of these cases was true, then they were wrong. And in this case, I want to tell them what the coin flip was, and then I want to tell them they lose. Now, the user doesn't want to see coin 0 or 1. They want to see heads or tails. So I'm going to have to check what the value of coin is, and then write out the appropriate message. So I'm going to put an if statement inside my else statement. And this is an important concept for you to notice, that as we build these code blocks, we can chain inwards indefinitely. Now, the more chains that you do, the harder your code is going to be to read. So I'm going to show you some things when we get into methods that can keep your code clean and easier to read. But for now, the code's going to be a little messy. That's okay. We're just looking at if statements. So I'm going to say if coin is 0, then let's write the coin flip was tails, comma. You lose. And I actually want that to be a right line. This is the joy of live coding. And then we'll say else. Well, if it wasn't tails, then it must have been heads console, right line, the coin flip was heads. You lose. And then I'm going to go to the very bottom of my code blocks. You can see that the curly braces get highlighted when I'm next to them so I can tell when they start and stop. I want to be inside the main method but outside of the if statement block. And I'm going to put a console.read line so that the application doesn't close on me. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. We're going to see how we did. It says enter your guess. Heads or tails? I'm going to guess tails. The coin flip was heads. I lost. Well, let's try again. Enter a guess. Heads or tails? I'm going to guess tails again. It was still heads. I still lost. And I can keep playing this game. Eventually I'm going to win. Apparently I have really bad luck. And there we go. I finally won. It only took me five tries. <laughs>